This is fourth grade math lesson 1-5, Estimation Strategies. Today, we will practice estimation strategies. Pay attention for important vocabulary during the lesson. Estimate, close but easier numbers. Rounding, is it reasonable or reasonableness? Let's look at a story. The teachers at Forest View School held a reading contest. All students would receive a free book if they read a combined total of 20,000 books by the end of the year. Here I have a chart. It shows the four quarters in the school year and how many books the students read each quarter. My question is, have the students read enough books? For this story, I can use the strategy of making an estimate. But what does it mean to make an estimate? Well, an estimate is an answer that's close to the exact answer. When we make an estimate, we're using words like about how many, close to, almost, around, approximately. I use estimating all the time when I'm shopping, cooking, time, distance. For example, I live about 12 miles from school. That's not the exact mileage, but an estimate is all I need to tell someone to give them an idea of how far I am from school. So. Let's think about how estimation will help us with the story about the reading contest. We probably don't need an exact number to answer that question. If we make an estimate and find out about how many books they read, we can answer the question, did they read enough books? One great strategy is using close but easier numbers. I'm going to choose numbers that make the problem easier to do mentally. So I might look at 6,520 and say, well, that's close to 6,500. 5,870, that's close to 6,000. 4,460 is close to 4,500. And 4,780, a close but easier number, 5,000. Now, my close but easier numbers over here are much easier to work with. So when I add my thousands together, 6,000 plus 6,000 plus 4,000 plus 5,000, and then I see these two 500s together that make another thousand, my total is 22,000. And I can answer the question, yes, they read enough books. So there's not just one correct way to choose close but easier numbers. Look at these close but easier numbers, 6,000, 5,000, 4,000, 4,000. Well, these are really friendly numbers that are easy to work with, with all these zeros on them. I looked at the thousands and I chose just the thousands for my close but easier numbers. And when I add just the thousands together, that's 19,000. But I can't forget that I still had all these hundreds left behind that I kind of ignored. And if I added these hundreds together, oh, that would be way more than a thousand more. So if this equals 19,000, and all of this is way more than 1,000, yes, the students must have read at least 20,000 books. So you can use close but easier numbers to make an estimate, and you could also use rounding. And you could round to the place of your choice, depending on how big the numbers are or depending on the story. So let's say we want to add 385 plus 412 plus 676. Get an estimate by using either rounding or close but easier numbers. So here I've solved 
I have the exact answer, 1473. Here I chose the strategy to round to the nearest 10. So 385 rounded to 390, 412 rounded to 410, 676 rounded to 680, and when I add those together, I get 1480. Here I chose close but easier numbers. For 385, I chose 400. For 412, I chose 400. For 676, I chose 700. When I added those together, I got 1,500. Both of these estimates are good estimates. Both of these strategies are useful strategies. One strategy is faster. Sometimes close but easier numbers will get us a faster, easier estimate. One strategy brings me closer to the exact answer. Rounding to the nearest 10 got me closer to my exact answer. The strategy that I choose will depend on the problem I'm solving. Let's take a look. On Sunday, 463 people were at the lake. On Monday, 226 people were at the lake, and 312 were there on Tuesday. Estimate how many people in all were at the lake. You can make an estimate by rounding or by choosing close but easier numbers. Sometimes we need to choose a strategy that will give us an estimate close to the answer. But sometimes we only need to know a rough estimate. You choose a strategy that helps you make sense of the story problem. Do we need to be very accurate here, or can we choose an easy and fast strategy and get a rough estimate? Let's look at a different story. Rob, Brian, and Ari need at least 950 pops popsicles for the school picnic. Rob bought 463, Brian bought 226, and Ari bought 312. Do they have enough popsicles? Should we make an estimate by choosing rounding or close but easier numbers? Remember, both strategies are useful. Sometimes we need to choose a strategy that will give us an estimate close to the answer, and sometimes we only need to know a rough estimate. Choose a strategy that helps you make sense of the story problem. What happens in this story if we don't get enough popsicles? Maybe this is a story that needs a strategy that will get us closer to the actual answer. So why are we doing all this work with making estimates? Well, there are several things that making an estimate is useful for. When we're problem solving, making an estimate will help us see if our answer makes sense. First we make an estimate, then we solve for the exact answer. Now we compare our exact answer to the estimate. That'll help us see if our answer is reasonable. So let's look back at this story. First, I decided to make an estimate here. I said 463, I could round to the nearest 10 to 460, but I think 450 is friendlier. And 226, I chose 220. And 312, I chose 300 for my estimate. And I estimated that they got about 970 popsicles. Okay, that's my estimate, 970. Then I got my exact answer, and when I added these three numbers, I got a sum of 1,970. Now, if I compare these two numbers, they're not really that close to each other. Something must be wrong. I think I made a good estimate over here, and I checked my work, and 
it makes sense that these three numbers together would be close to a thousand. So should my answer be close to two thousand? My answer is not reasonable. Looking at the good estimate that I made, I can see that I must have made an error in my addition. My exact answer is incorrect. So this is an important part of making an estimate to help see if our exact answer makes sense, to see if our exact answer is reasonable. First, we make our estimate. Then we solve for the exact answer. And then we compare to see if our answer is reasonable. Remember, it's not always desirable to make a more precise estimate. Sometimes we can get a rough answer. And we can use close but easier numbers just to find out around how many. Close but easier numbers are helpful when you just need a general idea. Rounding is helpful if you might want to be a little more precise in your estimate. So that's lesson 1-5. Are you able to make an estimate by using close but easier numbers or rounding? Are you able to use your estimate to see if your answer is reasonable? We'll use estimation all year long. We'll practice today in Lesson 1-5.